I want to welcome you to a new topic known as queuing models. So the first question I want to ask is, the first question I want to ask is, and, and again, I've put that question on the page for you. What is a queue? Who can tell me? What is a queue? What is a queue? A queue. What is that? When we say a queue, what is queue? You can raise your hand and let me know. What is a queue? Be a participant observer. Okay. What is a queue? Emmanuel Sakite. What is a queue? Yeah. All right, so Prof, show them, ask them. I'll see. Emmanuel, sorry, I lost you. Yeah, so I said in a layman's understanding, I'll see it as a, a, a waiting line. A waiting line, that's it. Fantastic. Okay. It's a waiting line. Dennis, please document Emmanuel Sakite. Yes. yes I, hope you are, I hope you are too much for me. And I hope you all have used your proper names. Okay, it's very important. And you know how some people's brain is going to change since I just gave the guy now too much. You know how some people's brain is going to change. Oh, so this man was giving max after all too for this. It changes the way they now behave. It changes the way they now raise their hands. So that is a cue. Is a cue good or bad? A cue. Is it good or bad? A Q, is it good or is bad? You can tell me. Mark Echiba. Mark Echiba, is a Q good or bad? So I think it can be a good and it can also be a bad. Give me a one of each in instance. A good in the sense that it brings order in a defined setting. And it's a bad in the sense that it also brings frustration as people tend to have to wait long hours to get served. Very good, very good. The most important thing is that it can be good and bad, okay? Now, in the context of what we're gonna to do today, we are looking at a bad queue. That's what we're gonna look at, a bad queue. That is when it builds up, okay? Last question. What are the advantages of queues? Give me one advantage of a queue and one disadvantage of a queue. When they build up, when they build up, when they build up, give me one advantage and one disadvantage. Okay. Michael Ousu. <clears throat> Michael or Michael. Yeah, Michael. So the... Michael, lost you. Yeah, please, uh, I, 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 unmute me. I have unmuted you, I can hear you. Okay, okay. So the disadvantage is one, uh, it wastes time. As my uh, friend said, people also get frustrated. So the disadvantage is waste time. Mm -hmm. Then the advantage, uh, it's, it brings order. And through the queue, you can also get to know your customers and also uh, interact with them. All right, thank you, thank you. Very good, two much for that, okay? All right, so ladies and gentlemen, what we want to do today, we want to look at queuing model, queuing model. Now, queuing model, there's a, so what I want you to do is to tell me examples of places or things that queue. Examples of places or things that queue up, okay, you tell me. Who can give me one example of things or places that queue build up? Let me go to Doji. Doji, if you ask, please, if you don't, if you are not answering the question, lower your hand. Good that will help. Good yes. Example is like a bank. Okay, so queues build up in a bank. Very good. Very good for that. If you ask, that's one mark I'm trying to give you here for each person who gives me a sensible answer. So that's good. Fine. Now let's go to charity. Charity Bola. Give me one example. Yes, yeah, charity. Please, at, the, at the hospital. 
at a hospital. That is very good. I like it. Okay, that is one mark. I like it when you give answers like that instead of saying in the office. In the office. Huh? Okay, because that is not practical enough. But this one is much, 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 much practical. Okay. Uh, Bismarck, give me one. And then um, shooter, get ready for one. Bismarck. Sir, at the restaurant, when people place their orders. At the restaurant, when people place their orders. Very good. Okay. A mark for that. And then shooter. Sir, at the airport, when you are checking in. Perfect. At the airport, when you are checking. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That is it. Now, let me give you a practical one and see which ones of yours came in. So, human beings queue to buy cocoa products queue in production. So, you can see that we are not talking about only human beings. Machinery waits in line to be served, like robotic machinery. Aeroplanes, they wait. So, it's not just a human being, but a plane. Students, they wait. Okay. All right. Please lower your hands. Please lower your hands so that I will know those who have questions. So that is what we are going to be doing when it comes to queuing. Okay. When it comes to queuing. Lower your hands. Those whose hands are up, I want to assume that you have questions. If you don't have questions, please lower your hands. If you don't have questions, lower your hands. Okay. Uh, Michael Ousu, you have a question. Sandra Odro, you have a question. Go ahead and ask me your question. Michael, Sandra, Michael. Michael, why are you appearing twice? Michael, unmute yourself. Yeah, go ahead. So my Go ahead. Oh, unmute yourself again. So I said my phone, the network is having a problem. So I go on and I go on. So I'm using a Wi-Fi and also a phone. No, no, I'm talking about how, why your hand is up, not about your phone. Oh, okay, okay, then let me know it. Michael, always be very cautious about your hand going up, eh? Because that one is okay. not about network. It's about you. Okay. So lower your hand. All right, okay. All right, so what I want to do is to look at Q model. Now, queuing is a topic that is an important topic. And I want to quickly do. So there are two things you need to note about queuing. One, why you got to study it? Because quick services define quality of customership. Managers, use cues that build up to make decisions. If you got too much cues, somebody says frustrations will come in, you might lose customers, you might lose profit, okay? And when you are able to handle cues, you get more, you're able to provide more services and goods. But there's a cost, there's a cost. So there are two things that I want you to write down. And this is key, key to what we're gonna do today. The first thing, the first thing is known as lambda, and I want you to note that down. Lambda, lambda. You're gonna understand what lambda is today. The second thing you're going to understand, these are the components of queuing, the content, the characteristics of a queuing process. The first is lambda. The second is mu, mu. The second is mu. If you don't get anything, ask questions. The second is mu. And the third one is the waiting line. The waiting line. So let's first talk about the lambda. What is the lambda? What is the lambda? Now watch the term we're going to use. Lambda and the mu, both of them are dealing with the customers. The lambda and the mu. Both of them are dealing with what? Customers, take notes, but, but, but different kinds of customers. Both of them are dealing with customers, but different kinds of customers. What is that? Now the lambda 
is the arrival rate. And I will explain very soon. Is arrival rate. Whereas the mu is a service rate. The mu is a service rate. The lambda is arrival rate. These two are the most important thing in the queuing process. What is the arrival rate? I told you that both of them are customers. Do you remember? Okay. So, 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 so both are customers. So when we say the arrival rate, what is that? We are talking about the average customers arriving at a particular time. So when we say Lambda is the average customers, average customers who are arriving okay, over a certain time period, that will be indicated. So I can say that, what is the average number of customers arriving in the bank in the first two hours? Mm -hmm. What is the average number of customers arriving in the bank in the first two hours? What is the average number of customers? The moment you see the word arrival, 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 arrive, arrive, that, ladies and gentlemen, is arrival rate, lambda. But you see, the fact that you have arrived within that first two hours doesn't mean that you've been served within that first two hours. Take note, because I'm going to ask you a question depending on how you understand it. If you don't ask me a question, I will ask you a question. The fact that you've arrived at the organization does not mean that you've been served. So within the first two hours or every two hours, now how many of those who have arrived are served? So the service rate is the average number of customers. And again, you have to be clear with the terminology you're using. Average number of customers being served. This is critical. Not who have been served, but being served. So guys, not something. You can arrive and you are in the bank or you are in the school, or you are at the airport, but you are not being what? You are not being served. So if you are not being served, it means that you are still part of the arrival rate. You are still part of the average number of customers arriving because you are not being served. But then you can be in the bank or in the in the in the airport or anywhere or in the plane, but you 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 have arrived, but you're being what said. You are being said. So the mu is the service rate. The service rate is the number of customers being served. I have a question for you. I hope you are following. So which one do you think? Which one do you think, listen carefully here, <laughs> which one do you think that the company will have control over? The arrival rate or the service rate? Which one do you think the company will have control over? The arrival rate or the service rate? Dorinda. Please, the service rate. The service rate, very good, okay. Hold on to that. I'm not done with you, okay. The service rate. Now. In order for queues not to build up, in order for queues not to build up, which one must be more than the other? Is it arrival rate must be more than the service rate or service rate must be more than the arrival rate? Okay. So in terms of the relationship between mu and then lambda, which one must should mu be less than lambda or should lambda be less than mu? Should mu be greater than lambda or lambda should be greater than? In order for queues not to build up, what should the situation be? Please, if you don't know, lower your hand. In order for queues not to build up. Okay, Andrews, me, Mate. 
and the stellar. Yeah, Doc, I believe the service rate should be more than the arrival rate in order for queues not to build up. Good. So he says that in order for queues not to build up, the service rate must be greater than the arrival rate, which means that what? Which means that still on you. Oh, wait, he's vanished. Which means that, oh, the guy is gone. <laughs> okay. Which means that, which means that what in relation to um, Felix, tell them, which means that what in relation to the arrival rates? It means that the arrival rate, even though it might be greater, the um, service should uh, be greater than the arrival rate. Which means that the arrival rate should be what than the service rate? Should be, be, should be greater than the service rate. No. We, you just said that the, the service rate should be greater than the arrival rate. Uh, yes. It means, uh, means the that arrival rate should, the arrival rate should be less than the service That's rate. That's it. I'm asking the same question. Okay. It means that the arrival rate has to be less. So at each time, the number of people arriving at the, at the premises must be less than the number of people who are being served. So if 10 people are being served, less than 10 people on average must be arriving. So the queues don't build up because the moment that queues are building up, that's when you start losing. Guys, this is the foundation. Once you get this part, you continue. If you don't get this part, you raise your hand and then we don't, uh, you know, we address it. But this stage is, is very important that you get this one before we move on. Um, Gijo, do you have a question? Gijo and Dorinda, do you have a question? No, sir, I'm okay. So why is your hand up? Please, if you don't have questions, always be conscious. You see, let me tell you some very good thing. I am conscious, even though I'm typing, I'm writing, I'm also clicking and lowering your hands for you. So you can see the multiple things I'm doing at the same time. So help me so that I don't, because I have all windows open. So that means that I'll be tangling between a lot of windows. So help me not to be coming to lower your hands for you. All right, now let's move on. Let's move on since you get the picture here. So what is the essence of queuing model? The essence is to reduce the queues. Because the waiting line, which is the last one, the L, that is a waiting line. The waiting line form because people or the things that are arriving at the service, they, they are faster. The, the people that are arriving as, on average are faster than they are being served. That's what build up queues. That's what the queues build up. Most companies have enough service server capacity to handle customers in the long run. In the long run, you can handle the situation. In the long run, you can create a system where things are being said. In the long run, but Milton Keynes will tell you that, you know, um, what do you call it? Um, 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 Keynes will tell you that in the long run, we are all dead. So, we don't want to wait for the long run. We want to deal with it as of when it happens. Customers, on the other hand, they don't arrive at a constant rate. So take note of these two things. One, customers don't arrive at a constant rate. They don't. They don't arrive at the same time. So we know that for sure. Okay? Customers don't come like this. All of them coming. Throughout the day, all of the customers don't come you know, at a... At, at, at the same constant rate. Some will come at this time, some will come at different times, some will do it on weekends, some will not, and all of that. No. So that's, that is a good thing. And so what it means is that we can still do it now. We can solve the situation in the short run without waiting in the long run for things to fester. Okay. Michael, I you may have a question. You can go ahead. Okay. Yes, my, my question uh, with what you said, a uh, typical example, uh, let's say at the hospital, there are certain time apportion for diabetes patients. So let's say on Thursday. So from what you said that customers may arrive at different times. So if a diabetes patient are apportioned Thursday to only come to the hospital 
you realize on Thursday, every Thursday morning, it's constant that the queue will be higher at uh, those going to see the doctor. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. That's, that's, that's so true. Now, what we're going to look at first is that we're going to look at a single server waiting line. That's what we're going to look at. A single server waiting system. Now, this is simple. What it means is that you, it, it's made up of first come, first serve basis. Okay. It's made up of first come, first serve. So, so we are looking at a situation where there's no discrimination. It's on a first come, first serve basis. We look at a discipline and then we look at the nature of the population. Now, let's look at the discipline. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes some are not first come, first serve basis, okay, which we call FIFO. Sometimes the, the discipline is that is random. Okay, it's random. So anybody, so you came first, but because of what you are looking for, you don't, you won't be served first. Because maybe somebody came is a private person, somebody came is a, a VIP person, somebody came is a is a regular person. So depending on that time, you the person will be served because of who the person is. And some people also do appointments. So there could be a service where there's appointment and all of that. And then, so even if you come last, you'll be safe first because you have an appointment. Okay. All of these things are there. But what we are going to look at more today is about the first come, first serve. So what are the characteristics of the first come, first serve? Listen, guys, do you remember what the arrival rate was? The arrival rate deals with the human beings. Human beings. The average number of customers arriving the average number of customers arriving. But at what rate do they arrive? What is the distribution of the arrival? Please note, the arrival rate follows a Poisson distribution. The arrival rate follows a Poisson distribution. The service rate follows a negative exponential distribution. Yeah, 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 don't worry, just note it, okay? I'll show you an example of what I mean, okay? How the distribution looks like the arrival rate. So this is the arrival rate. All of these examples you are seeing are the arrival rate. We, I told you that the arrival rate is not constant. So you can see it rises, it flattens, it rises, it stabilizes, it rises. The probability is Poisson. So these are different kinds of Poisson distribution. Okay, and you can see that it's going up. It's going up. On average, okay, over time, over time, that is by the by the end of the day, you can see that the cumulative arrival rate has gone up. Okay. But it goes, so sometimes you see that the service, let's take a bank as an example, but please note, it's not only a bank. For example, if you look at the hospitals, okay, in the early days, it looks like it's choked down. As it's getting towards the evening, what happens? Or there was the afternoon evening, you can see that things are coming down, okay? The arrival rate is lower. The arrival rate is lower, but the cumulative arrival is, 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 is higher. So this is the Poisson distribution of the arrival rate. Now, the service rate is a negative exponential because if eventually the service rate is like a builds up, then it starts what? Okay. It starts going down. It starts going down. It starts going down. It start going down. So the people, okay, it gets to a point they have nothing else to say. So that is how it looks like. It looks like a, an asymptotic curve. None of them is normally distributed. That's the point you are trying to say. None of them is normally distributed. And when I say none of them is normally distributed, what do I mean? What I mean is that none of them is like this. Okay, let me see what I can get. Okay, none of them. Oh. Oh, I'm not able to show the WC. None of them is normally distributed. Let me see what I can use this one. Okay, normally distributed like this. None of them is. So the distribution is Poisson and then negative exponential distribution. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you now eight important characteristics or formula for handling queuing models. Eight important formulae handle 
for, for handling queuing models. Okay, so let's let's go. I'm going to be mentioning them and then writing them, and I want you to do the same thing. Because if you don't get used to, ooh. all right, I think we are back. Okay, I think we are we are beautifully back. Can you hear me? Yes, Doc. Perfect. Okay, so. Um, Let's get a first characteristic or the first formula, and then we will explain what the formula is about. Okay. The first formula of the queuing model, okay. Follow me and be writing it, okay, because I'll be asking something. The first is the probability that customers are in the queue. Write it down. The probability that customers are in the queue. That is a formula the probability that customers are in the queue. Okay. So, so in other words, this formula is the probability. So I can ask you, what is the probability that, oops, what is the probability that the server is um, Oh, sorry, 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 sir. Please note. This is a probability that no customer is in the queue. Okay. This is a probability that no customer is in the queue. So it's the same as the probability that the server is busy. Sorry, the server is idle. The probability that the server is idle. So when I say that, can you find me what what, what are the chances that the server is idle. I'm asking that what are the chances, the likelihood, the probability that no customer is in the queue? And please, guys, think, think practical. Don't think too, just practical. What, what, what we mean is that the probability that the server is idle is not doing anything. And the only thing that will make a server idle is when there are no customers to serve. So the probability that a customer is, I mean, there's no customer, okay, is the same as the probability that a server is busy. Okay, it's the same thing. Okay, it's the same as the probability that a server is busy. So when I ask you the probability that a server is busy, you should solve it like this. So by then you should know what your arrival rate is. So this is arrival rate. You should know. Sometimes if you don't know, you have to calculate it. You should know the arrival rate. And then you should know the service rate. And then one minus that. Remember, probability is between zero and one. One minus that will give you the probability that no customer is in the queuing system. No customer is in the queuing system. That is why the server is idle. Guys, let me tell you something. The queuing system, okay, some of you are raising your hands. When I ask you what the question you have, and you still don't have a question. Okay. The queuing system. Doc, please. I wanted to ask, you mentioned you just mentioned now that um when the server is busy, but I see you write when the server is idle, and I'm getting a bit confused. Okay, so it's when so the server is idle. Okay. So when the server, okay, I should have given you when the server is busy first. So when the server is busy, the probability that the server is busy is lambda over mu. Okay. So okay. probability, let me just use a different thing. The probability that the server is busy, let me just put a small b here, is just lambda over mu. So that means the server is busy, busy working. Yes. And the probability that the server is idle, which means no customer is being served. Not that no customer is being served alone, but there's no customer in the queuing system. Please note, the queuing system is made up of the arrivals plus the service. So those being served plus those arriving, they make up the queuing system. Those being served plus those arriving, they make up the queuing system. So please take note. And the probability that a server is idle 
is because there is no customer in the queuing system. But the probability that the server is busy is because customers are being served. So when I ask you, what is the probability that a customer is being served? What is the probability that a customer is being served? Is this, I'm telling you that, find the probability that a server is busy. Okay, a server is busy. So that, that terminology, take note, it can confuse you sometimes. The probability that a customer is being served is the same as the probability that the server is busy. The opposite is one minus that answer. So one minus that will give you that the probability that the server is idle or the probability that no customer is in the queue system. So these are the two most important formally, two, two important, not the most important, formally that you should know out of the eight characteristics. Please note, they are about probabilities. So I've given you a formula which is about probabilities. We'll come and work it. We'll come and work it. But just take note of the formula. All right. So I've given you a formula on probability. Now I'm going to give you a formula about the customers. I'm going to give you a formula about the customers. What do I mean? Well, the next formula, which is the formula about the customers, is L. There's one called L, and there's one called LQ. We're going to look at the two. It's about the customers. What is that? It is not on the probability. Okay? It is the average number of customers. So the L is given by lambda over mu minus lambda. Okay, lambda over mu minus lambda. And we are talking about, what is this, by the way? It is the average number of customers, L means customers, average number of customers in the queuing system. That is L. In the queuing system, remember, there's no queue attached to it. In the queuing system. Okay, so L, which is the lambda over the mu minus the Lambda. Guys, note that we are going to be using this lambda mu, lambda mu, lambda mu, lambda mu, a lot of the times in our formula. And this L deals with the average customers in the system, the queuing system. And when I say in the queuing system, I'm talking about those being served plus those arriving. Those arriving plus those being served. That's what I mean by the system. Okay. So if I ask you, what is the average number of customers in the queuing system? It is this formula. It is this formula. And the content of the formula, you know them. Please know that there was no Q there. There was no Q attached to the L. There was no Q attached to the L. So it means that the next one, which is still going to be about the customers, will be on the queue. Because the Q stands for queuing. So this second formula on the right here, that you can see, it is given by lambda square over, okay, lambda square over mu, into brackets, mu minus lambda. Write it down, lambda square, over mu into brackets mu minus lambda. It is the average number of customers who are queuing. It is the average number of customers who are queuing. It is the average number of customers waiting to be said. It is the average number of customers waiting to be said is an average number of customers who are queuing in the line. Is the average number of customers queuing in the line. So anytime you see Q attached to any of the formulae, it is there for the queuing ones, okay? Because the whole essence of a queue model is to try and know the queue, deal with the queue. Know the queue, Deal with it, know it, deal with it, know it, deal with it, know it, deal with it. Okay, 
No idea with it. We are going to be using these formula very soon. Okay, but for now, I'm just giving them to you so that if you have a question with them, you ask them. Agnes, you have a question. Yeah, please. I still don't get the difference between the average number of customers in the queuing system and then the average number of customers who are queuing. And if you could throw more okay. light on it. So, Bye. all right, no problem. So the system, the system is what is important, not the word queuing. So when I say average number of customers in the queuing system, I'm talking about the average number of customers in the system. Okay, now the queuing system or the system is made up of those arriving plus those being served. Those arriving, please let me tell you, when you are being served, you are happy. You're happy. So when you're being served, it's like job done. But when you are queuing or you're waiting before you to serve, you're not happy. Okay. So the queuing system is made up of those who are unhappy plus those who are happy that they are being served. But then this second one, LQ here, is dealing with those who are happy alone because they are being saved. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry, sorry. Uh, the LQ here is dealing with those who are unhappy because they are queued. They are waiting to be saved. They, are, they have not even been called. They haven't been called. The queue means that they are queuing. They are waiting to be saved. But then the system is made up of those who are waiting to be saved plus those who are being saved. Do you get it, Agnes? Yes, please do. So, Agnes, before you go, so where would you want to be? The L or the LQ? The L. That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because that one, you know that the likelihood of you, you know, being part of those being served is high. Yes, yes. Thank you. So, so ladies and gentlemen, we've looked at two formulae, there are four formulae. Two of them are dealing with the probabilities, as you just see it on the top here. We are dealing with the probabilities. Two that we've just looked at also are dealing with what? We are dealing with the average customer, the customers, the customers. Okay. Now, we are going to the next formula. And this one is probably the most important. The next only, and this is known as. Um, so again, the the first one was on the probability. The second one was on the average customers, but this one is going to be about the time. So we've looked at probability, formally on probability, formally on the average customers. Now we are going to look at formally on average time, average time, average time. Guys, do you remember that just some few minutes ago, I gave you the average customers who are in the queuing system. And then I also gave you the average customers who are being saved or, sorry, the average customers who are in the queue, who are waiting, who are waiting to be saved, okay? Not being saved, but they are waiting to be saved, which is the second formula. Now they are about customers. I'm gonna give you the same thing, but they are about time. So what it means is that, I'm going to give you a formula on the average time. Okay. I'm going to give you a formula on the average time customers spend in the queuing system. The average time customers, you know, customers spend in the queuing system. It's the time here, the average time. Okay. And this average time customers has, we call it W. Okay. We call it W. So W here is going to be one over mu minus lambda. One over mu minus lambda. What is that? What is that? It is the average time. The time here is important. Anytime you see the W time, the average time spent in the queuing system. That is the time spent waiting plus the time spent being saved. Or the time spent saved. Okay. 
times 24 7. so the, this is the average time spent in the queuing system okay the average time spent now the opposite is the one with the q who can tell me what this q wq will stand for not the formula but tell me what the wq will refer to what would the WQ refer to? What would the WQ refer to? Let me go to, because it's your understanding. What would the WQ mean? Nana Bengi, what does the WQ stand for? Um, so I believe the WQ will stand for the average time spent by the customers who are waiting to be served. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so this is the average time, okay, queuing, average time spent queuing. Okay, average time spent queuing, or average time spent waiting, or average time spent waiting in the queue. As long as that queue is there, you are queuing, you are waiting. And for me, this is the most important formula in the whole human model, okay? The average time, okay, spent waiting, waiting or queuing. This is it, this, this is it. It's a lambda over the mu into bracket mu minus lambda. If I can know the time these guys are queuing, Okay, the average time they spent in the queue. I can cut it down. I can cut it down. If I know the time, I can reduce the time. Okay, and that is the essence of this. So please note, we have given two formulae. Two of them are on probability. Two of them on the average customers. Two of them on the average time. So you see the thing? Two of them on the average customers. Two of them on the average time. The last one. The last one. And the last two actually I've already given, technically speaking. Okay. But we are gonna just, we're just gonna give you uh, an, a, a new twist to, to, to that one. Okay. And that one, the first one is known as U. U. The U is a utilization factor. The U here stands for the utilization factor. Now, what is a U? It is a probability that the server is busy. You can remember, I gave you something similar to that. The probability that the server is busy, which means the probability that the customer must wait. The probability that customer must wait. That's another way you can hear that word. The probability that a customer might, if you've got to wait, then it means the server is busy. It is also called the utilization factor. The utilization here means that the server is telling you that I am being utilized. I am being utilized. So the probability that I'm being utilized, that is it. The, the, that's it. The server is busy. The probability that the server is busy, the customer got to wait. Now, its opposite is called L, sorry, I. I. I is one minus all of this one. Okay. The I is the idle part. So I is that the server is idle. Now, if the server is idle, it means that a customer must be served. So the probability that the customer must be served or can be served is this. I, which is one minus the probability that the customer is, you know, the customer has to wait. Okay. So the probability that the server is idle here is one minus the probability that the server is busy. So I is actually one minus U, that's what it means. I is one minus U. Write everything down. Write everything down. The human brain usually takes a smaller percentage of information. So when you write it down, it helps you. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of the formula. 
any question about a formula. You're going to use, we're going to learn. At this stage, you're going to learn. All right. So let's start by learning some few things. Because one of the most, one of the challenging things in the QN model is not the formula. Because as for the formula, it's not a problem because the formula will be given to you. What is the key is you getting what the arrival rate is and the service rate is. The arrival rate. Who can remember the symbol for the arrival rate? What is the symbol for the arrival rate? It's lambda. Okay. So note, this lambda is arrival rate. The lambda is arrival rate. And the mu is a service rate. But before we can understand this lambda and the mu better, let's refresh our mind with some things. And please pay attention to I implore you, pay attention. Do you know how to convert minutes to hours and vice versa? Do you know how to do that? How to convert minutes to hours? Can you do that? Okay. Okay. Can you convert minutes to hours? Okay. Chat with me. Can you convert minutes to hours? Can you do that? Can you do that? If I say 30 minutes, how many hours is that? 30 minutes is how many hours? Type it there. 30 minutes is how many hours? Half an hour. Thank you. 30 minutes is how many? 0.5. I like the 0.5. 30 minutes is 0.5. You see, that one you know, so it's so easy. It's so easy. It's so easy because you know. Or let me put it this way because you think you know. So, but there are some things you have to learn. What is 0.25 hours? What is 0.25 hours? Let me write that down. Okay. What is 0.25 hours? What is that? What is 0.25 hours? Now, some of you are writing because what you're doing, you're jiggering your mind across because you know, you know that, oh, 0.25, another 0.25, another 0.25, another 0.25, that will make up one. So it means that, it's a, but you must, I, I'm not interested in the final answer. I'm interested in how you worked it. So what divided by what? What times what? Do you, for me, that is critical. So what divided by what? What times what? What multiplied by what? Did you get that right? That for me, that is what I want to know. That is what will tell me, not your general mind, because if it is, okay, if it is something else, you see, you see somebody is losing it now. Somebody says that somebody is, is, is multiplying 0.25 by 60. Another is multiplying 0.25 by dividing 0.25 by, you see, you see, he, you see, somebody has gone to do 60 divided by four. Somebody has done 0.25 times that. But how did you get a four? You just got up and took four. Sister divided by four. Okay. So what are you doing? Ladies and gentlemen, what if the number is not 0.25, it is 0.73? How would you work that? How do you work 0.73? It's critical. It's critical. And for me, that is the most important thing, okay? So let's learn some principles here, very quickly. Okay, I'm gonna jump this at this stage. Okay. Do you remember if more or less divide? Type it down, okay? If more or less divide, do you remember? Okay, if more or less divide, okay? If more or less divide, memorize that, if more. Do you know what that if more or less divide means? It means that if less, more divide. So if it is going to be more, the less we divide. So suppose I tell you that five over 10, okay, is, is, is something over, uh, okay. So, so if I tell you that five is to 50, okay, what is going to be is to uh, 70. If I tell you that five is to 50, what is going to be to 70? You don't just cross multiply. Oh. You have to know if more or less divide, if less. More. So this one, is it going to be less or is it going to be more? The value of X. Is it going to be less? 
You see, somebody just said more. That's wrong. Dorinda, that was incorrect. The value of X, is it going to be less or more? I'm looking for X here. Will it be less or more? Who can tell me? You can raise your hand and tell me or type it. Okay, it's going to be less. Okay. The value of a five is to 50. What is to 70 is going to be less. So if it is going to be less, the more we divide, the more we divide here means the more will come down. The more we divide means that the more will come down. So the more comes down. In this case, the, the more. The more is this two, which I have the answers. And between this 50 and the 70, the more comes down. That is the more we divide because I'm expecting uh, uh, the value to be more. Oh, that's how I was expecting it to be less. I'm expecting the value to be more. So if I'm expecting the value to be more, the less we divide. Okay, so it's supposed to be five, okay. Um, it's going to be X over five, Let me put it through. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, 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 what do you call it? It's going to be five x over five. Okay, equals to seventy over fifty. I mean, I'm just following if more or less divide here. And so you cross about cross multiply fifty by x, and then multiply five by seventy. Okay, and then. When you multiply five by 70, you get 350. So it's 350 divided by that, and that is going to give you seven. Is it? 350 divided by 50 for the X. So X is going to be 350 divided by 50, which is going to be um, seven. So the value of X is not going to be seven, which is indeed more. That is why. So, so the point is that you need to understand if more or less divide here. But I'm going to give you a couple of examples for you to get a picture here. If you don't use the principle of if more or less divide, if you don't use that principle, you will get lost at some point, unless you have another way of doing it, which is fine. If you have another way of doing it, that is perfectly fine. Let's get a better understanding of this. I'm going to give you a lot of examples here, a lot of examples here. So number one. 10 minutes equals how many hours? Quickly, this ones must be very, very, very quick. 10 minutes equals how many hours? Raise your hand. 10 minutes equals how many hours? 10 minutes is how many hours? Mm -hmm. Somebody is getting us. 10 minutes, how many hours is 10 minutes? Ah, see at this stage it's not getting that's simple. Okay, so how many hours is 10 minutes? So you now have 10 minutes, okay? And you are saying that it is equal to how many hours? Okay. X hours. Well, the first thing you got to note here is that 10 minutes, one minute, sorry, um, 60 minutes. That's what you know first. 60 minutes is one hour. So 10 minutes would be what? Would be less. So our X will be less. So if it is less, then it means the 10 must come down. So if it is going to be less, then the more will divide. So we are going to have more dividing. So you're going to have 10, 10 by more. And the more that is dividing is a 60. Okay. So 10 by that. And then that will be equal to X over one okay and then when you do this you do your cross multiplication we're going to get 60 divided by 10. when you do your cross multiplication you get 60x equals to 10. so x is equal to 0. 0.6 so 10 minutes is equal to 0. 0.6 hours 10 minutes is 0.6 hours, okay? But you should use that principle. 
or let me be sure whether I use the right approach. So 10 minutes. Ten minutes. Uh, what about sixty minutes? Is one hour. Ten minutes will be less. Okay. So, if less multiplied, and you have that. So, what answers are you guys giving me? Or oh, you are giving me the answers in hours? The answers you guys are giving is it in hours or in minutes? And by the way, when you finish all the time, you multiply it by 60 to get back in minutes. Okay. What is what is 10? What is what is 0. 0.6 hours? What is 0. 0.6 hours in minutes? What is 0. 0.6 hours in minutes? Um, let me multiply and see. Times 60, right? 36, okay. Oh, 36 minutes. Okay, so at least when you multiply, you don't get back that. So it means that our calculation, my calculation is wrong. Let me see. What was my question? 10 minutes equal to, oh, yay, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, all right. So 10 minutes is how many hours? That is 0 0.16, 0 0.7, 0 0.17 hours. Is that correct? Let me see. 0 0.17, so multiply 0 0.17 times 60. Yeah. So approximately 0 0.17 hours. Okay. 0 0.17 hours. which is 10 divided by 60. Okay, 10 divided by 60. So the mistake I did is that 10, 10 divided by 60. Okay, so you should multiply the 10 by the X. Okay. And then you cannot divide both by 60. You multiply the 10 by the X and then divide both by 60 and that will give you point Actually, that will give you point one six 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 seven. Which one to multiply by sixty? And again, what, the reason why I say multiply by sixty is I want to convert it back to minutes. So always you multiply your answer by sixty, and in this case you get back your ten. All right, I think most of you get it more than the if less more divided approach that I'm using. So if you if you get it, use it. So let me give you one more to be sure that you are on the same page with me. But for those of you who don't get it, raise your hand and ask a question. Okay. But most of you have already gotten it from what I'm seeing out there. So find this for me. 40 minutes is how many hours? 40 minutes is how many hours? So now it will be easy to do. Yeah, 40 minutes is how many hours? Raise your hand or type your answer for me quickly. 40 minutes. 40 minutes is 0.66 hours, that's it, okay? It's 0.66 hours, I'm sure you're getting it now. 40 minutes is 0.66 hours. Let's go to the next one. Okay, I'm doing some quick, quick examples. Now, 0.6 hours is how many minutes? 0.6 hours is how many minutes? 0.6 hours is how many minutes? Yeah, okay, this one should be quick, 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 quick. Excellent, excellent, 36 minutes, 36 minutes, 36 minutes. See, if you are here and you are not doing some, you are in trouble, okay? You got to be doing some. You got to know what's happening. You don't watch and wait for the answers, okay? And, and those that are giving the answers, if you, if you don't know and they are getting the answer, you should find out why. You should raise and ask why. It's not, it's not a matter of, okay, so let's go to an advanced level now, okay? And I'm now going to show you the question for you to solve it for me, okay? I want an advanced level of this. And this, this will tell you that we are calculating something. Okay. Now somebody wants to raise a hand because I said, and I raise your hand if you don't understand. That is when some people realize that they have to raise their hands. Okay. All right, Gazari. Gazari, what's your question? Uh, so, uh, mine is not a question, but from what you have um, solved, I, I, I discovered a pattern 
where maybe if the what you are asking us to find is in decimal, okay, maybe 0 0.6 into hours, maybe I'll multiply it by 60. But if it's in whole numbers, then I divide by 60. Can I take it that way? Or oh, it's no, not a good way to because some of them can be more. For example, you can have two hours, 70 minutes. Okay. So two hours, 70 minutes, how will you how will you work it? Okay. Yes. So, so just make sure that because it's not all the time. You can have hours and minutes all together. If you, if I tell you that two hours seventy minutes, okay, you should know that the answer you're going to have is going to be um, one hundred and ninety minutes. So how are you going to get the one hundred and ninety minutes? Yeah. So I don't want to use that approach. Just note that 60 minutes is an hour. 120 minutes is two hours. 30 minutes is 0.5 hours. And with that, you should be able to now know. You should just know, if I ask you quickly, what is three hours in minutes? You just multiply three by 60. Okay, but what is 100 minutes in hours? What do you do quickly? This time you don't multiply by 60, but what do you do? You divide. you divide. Exactly. So once you have that approach, that's fine. But whatever pattern you have found provides okay. the pattern works. Uh, but just that the one you are telling me doesn't always. All right, okay. Let's move on. So the question I want to guys to answer is this. Now I'm going to ask you a question to find me the service rate. Okay. To find me the arrival rate or the service rate. Uh, it is in the form of a question, like what we're about to do. So this is a question. If it takes five minutes to serve a customer at Papaya, if it takes five minutes to serve a customer at Papaya, how many customers are served in an hour? If it takes five minutes to serve a customer at Papaya, how many? Now, what do you think the question is asking you? Is the question asking you of the arrival rate or the service rate? Which one? Is it arrival rate or the service rate? Saki, is it arrival or service? Service, yeah. What tells you that is the service rate? Okay, so it's looking at the number of customers that can be served so what within an. What word? Okay, so serve in an hour. Save, save, forget about the hour, save. That's the word. Saved, yeah. yeah. So you see, you gotta, you gotta be learning the key to, our, to knowing what you are looking for. All right, fantastic. Now let's go and solve this. Who has solved this and can raise a hand and tell me, I wanna give marks for this. Who has solved this and can raise a hand and tell me, that is if you did it to yourself, you didn't copy. You know, sometimes the temptation is to copy. Van Dyke. Yes, sir. Um, so uh, it takes five minutes to serve a customer, meaning within uh, an hour, which is so made up of six minutes. Then you can explain. Okay, it's, it's 12, 12 customers. 12 customers are served within, within an hour. Exactly. So 12 customers per hour. That's it. That's how you answer it. So now explain. Okay, so uh, we, we know within an hour we have 60 minutes. And then a, pay, uh, a client is served within, uh, one client is served within five minutes. Meaning to get the number of customers that are served within one hour, you have to divide uh, 60 minutes by five minutes, which it takes to serve one, one customer. So that's what that he's... Yes, please. That will give you 12 customers per hour. So I just want to, fantastic, that's too much for you there. I just want you guys to know that that 12 is customers. That 12, okay, is customers. It's average customers per hour. So it means that 12 customers are served within five minutes. Oh, sorry, 12 customers are served within one hour. So within one hour, 12 customers are served within 
five minutes, one is served. All right, so you got that. And that gives you the value of the new, the service rate, okay, which is what we have here. Let's take another one. A system has one facility, okay? A system has just one facility. And a system has one facility that can service 10 customers per hour. The customers arrive at an average rate of six per hour. The customers arrive at an average rate of six customers per hour. That's what it means. But the question is, what are the chances that a customer has to wait? What are the chances that a customer has to wait? What do you think this question is really asking you about? What are the chances that a customer has to, what do you think this question is really asking you about? You can raise your hand and tell me. Based on all the formula and all the things you have done, what exactly do you think this question is asking you about? What, what is it? Yeah, Dorinda. Um, this is asking about the waiting time, as in the time in the queue. The waiting time, okay. the time spent queuing. All right, Dorinda, that is wrong. That unfortunately is not correct. That's not what it's asking you about. Let me lower your hand and go to the next person. See if I saw what, what is it asking you about here? So I so, think based on the formula you gave us, it's asking about the utilization factor, specifically asking, the U. It's asking you about the utilization factor. Now, say first, what is the U? Yes, the U is a utilization yes. factor. Yes. And what is the formula for that? As lambda over mu. Perfect. So ladies and gentlemen, watch the word. What are the chances that a customer has to wait? Now, if a customer has to wait, what does that tell you? If a customer has to wait, it means that you, the server is what? Slower than. Slower than. No, 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 I didn't use the morality. It means that the server is what? Is what? This man. The server is what? It means the server is busy. That's it. The server is busy. Oh, okay. And because the server is busy, that is why the customer has to wait. So the server is busy because the server is being what? The server is being what? Can tell me. The server is being what? Yes, Bismarck. Bismarck, sir, what are we? Sir. Yes. I mean, the server is being utilized. What's the point? The server is being utilized. The server will be too much for that. Max. The server is being utilized. Okay. So are we please mute yourself? The server is being utilized. So what you have to do is just like my good friend just said that this is just a calculation of the utilization factor. That's all. Calculation. So it means that you have to know one, the lambda, and then you have to know two, the service rate. So who can tell me the answer for this? You have to know the lambda, and you have to know the. Or some of you have already calculated. Okay. So who can, who, who has calculated and? And tell me, okay. And there's some, there's a unit of measurement okay, that you have to tell me with. Who can tell me the answer after calculating? So you are calculating the utilization factor. Who has done the calculation of this utilization factor? Raise your hand. As if I was giving you $50,000 to raise your hand, you would have done it. All right, so let me go back to Bismarck. Uh, Bismarck, what was the answer? 0 0.6, sir. 0.6 is the right answer. Okay. So that's 60%. I wanted you to add that to okay. me. 50%. But that's, that's good. Two marks again for you. Okay. So that is how you tackle these questions. That is how you address it. That is how you tackle it. That's how you address it. Uh, Redeemer, do you have a question? Okay. All right. 
So first thing, yes, uh, yeah, what's your question? Um, uh, just a clarification. We see that the formula for the probability that the server is busy and the utilization are the same. But yes. if the question say, what are the chances? Is it not asking of a probability rather than the utilization? Are the same? Okay. <laughs> Okay. Whatever it is, they are the same. Like you just said it yourself. Okay. So you, you are, all of you are being asked the utilization factor. The utilization factor is lambda over mu. Okay. The lambda is arrival rate. And you were told that arrival rate is what? Six. You can see the customers arrive. Okay. And then you are told that the service rate, which is the mu, is 10. So it's six by 10, which will give you 0.6 or 60%. So that is how you do this very calculation. Okay. Now, oh, you have two questions. All right, those of you who sounds are up, we'll ask your question. Yeah, hello, sir. Mm -hmm. Now, it, look, it, looks like, uh, it looks like the utilization, uh, sorry, the service rate is faster or is higher than that of the arrival rate. Uh, sixty percent, uh, which suggests that uh, the chances that the customer has to wait is sixty percent. That that I'm, I'm confused. You're confused about what the answer is. That what you're confused the, about? The, what, what we are looking for is what are the chances that the customer has to wait, and we said it's sixty percent uh -huh. that that the customer has to wait. But then from the question, we know that the service rate is rather uh, higher than that of the arrival rate. So the, the customer will not have to, doesn't have to wait for so long. Yeah, but then the service rate, which you are seeing here, okay, is 10 customers are being served every hour. All right, six people are arriving. It doesn't mean that you know, um, 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 what do you call it? it? It doesn't mean that you won't have people being served. It, it is within an hour. So within every hour, 10 customers are being served. But that same within that every hour, you have how many? You have six of them um, arriving. So if six of them are arriving, and then you have, please note that, there's a difference between the service, uh, what we call it, the queuing, and then the queuing system. I want to repeat. There's a difference between queuing. So the customers that are arriving at six customers every hour, six customers every hour, they are only in the arrival. I didn't tell you that those who are, um, what do you call it, uh, who are in the queuing system. So if I were to ask you, how many customers are in the queuing system? What would you say? How many customers are in the queuing system? Is the guy off? Yeah, he's on. Van Dyke. Yes, sir. How many customers are in the queuing system? Do you know the queuing system is made up of the arrivals plus the being served? Yes, sir. Okay. So how many customers are in the queuing system? This uh, for the arrival will be the arrival will be six within the hour. But then uh -huh. the being served, being served, uh, I need to look for the formula to, to work that one out. You need to I think it's 16. Okay. So you have 16 people in the queuing system. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm asking him. You have 16 people in the queuing system, which means that some has to wait. I'm coming back to your point that you don't get it. It means that some of them have to wait. You have 16 people, 16 people in the queuing system. Out of those 16 people, okay, in the queuing system per hour, it means that 10 of these people are being saved. And then six of them 
are arriving every hour. So it means that if you are arriving, there is a chance that you got to be waiting because there are 16 people. So, sir, I don't think it is 16. Okay, it's what? He added a six to the arrival uh, time. So what is it? Week. So I am asking, what is it? Uh, it will be six plus. Um, hmm. Tell me, since you know it's not 16, you tell me. I know it's not exactly that amount, but I'm, I'm, I'm still asking you to tell me. Because I need to calculate. I need to sit up, but I don't think it is 16. No, 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 no. Okay, what is it? How will you work it? <laughs> Banana Benny is your hand up. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Banana Benny, your hand is up. Your hand keeps going up. Yes, my hand is up. Ah, go ahead. So the question you asked was the number of customers in the queuing system. Yeah. Yeah, so that, would, that means we would use the formula that is L. Exactly. That's lambda. So I couldn't calculate immediately. So let me just use it. Use it and calculate it for us. The L. So I got I got 1.5. That would be 6 over um, 10 minus 6. That's lambda over mu minus lambda. Lambda over mu minus lambda. Okay. Okay, let me see. Um, sorry, that, did a question tell us, the question we had, did it tell us that what we had was average? Yeah, yeah, it tells us. So you have 10 customers okay, being served. The customers arrive at an average rate of six per hour. And you have 60% chance to wait. Oh, come on. Let me go back to um, Bismarck. You were the one asking the question, right? No, oh, sir. You were um, the one. I think Van Dyke, Van Dyke asked the question. Hello, sir. Uh -huh. Sir, I was the one. So, Van Dyke, let me ask you something. You were told that the arrival rate, okay, the arrival yes. rate, forget about the percentage, yes. you were told that the arrival rate was six. Was, was rather thin. No, the service rate. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah, and then the service rate was 10, right? Yeah, sure. yes, yes, you're right. So the chances that somebody is being utilized is 60%. Okay. And, and you, still, you say you don't get it, why? A server is being utilized, not all of the server, a server. Okay, is being utilized 60% of the time, of the, of the hourly time, okay? The number of people are arriving and then 10 of them are being saved, okay? And so if you have 10 of them being saved and then you have six of them, six of them are actually arriving, then the server is being utilized 60% of the time. You, you think that is not Yes, possible? yes, that, uh, sir, that I understand. Uh -huh. But the, the passage that the customer is waiting it being 60%, that is what I don't understand. The, the what? The chances that a customer is, is, is waiting to be saved. What about the chances that a customer is waiting? Okay, that, that 60% of the time, the server is being utilized. Do you understand that? That I understand, yes, sir. Okay. If you understand that, then that's okay, because that is it. Okay, okay. If you understand that maybe it's the terminology that is being used here that you don't understand. But if you okay. understand that 60% of the time the server is being utilized, that is key. That is that is all we are looking for. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next one. 
Guys, if you have a question, ask this question to her. Let's go to the next one. This next one is a very quick one because I want to go into a deeper one. Okay. This is a 2012 question. It was a question one. This was 2012, 2013, 2012, 13. And it's asking that the ticket booth on Ebrawaho campus, the ticket booth is operated by one person. And that person is selling tickets for the annual Yam Festival. And you are told that it's ticket server, oh, sorry, the ticket seller can serve an average of 15 customers every hour. But watch here. On average, three customers arrive to buy tickets each minute. Okay. Three customers arrive to buy tickets each 15 minutes. Question. Determine the average time a, cust a ticket buyer must wait in the queue. Determine the average time. Check your formula and you'll know what is being asked. Determine the average time a ticket buyer must wait in the queue. Solve it and let me see. Just that one, don't go to the next one. Determine the average time the ticket buyer must wait in the queue. What formula? What formula are we looking for here? Who can raise their hand and tell me? What formula? What formula? When you mention the name of the formula, you tell me the formula. What formula are we looking for here, Agnes? That is the utilization factor. What formula is that? Is the lambda over mu. Are you sure? Or you want, because that one, you gave that thing for the previous one, you're giving it now. It's like that formula, you enjoy it. Aggie, determine the average time. Average time. And you said it's a utilization factor. You see, you see how no, it's the don't, worry, don't give a different answer because I queried you, but think about it. Think about it. Let me go to Daniel. Otherwise, you give the answer. Oh, so, so sorry, you give the answer. It's, it's lambda over um, mu and no, tell me the mu thing before, before you go and tell me what it is. Tell me the thing for what the, is uh -huh. the vehicle, the average. Uh, Time spent in waiting, WQ is called exactly. Lambda over. Once you mention the WQ, then I see, uh, what's her name? Uh, that lady who answered it first. The first thing you should do is to mention what it is before you give the comment. All right, so what is it? Um, the guy talking, Daniel. Yes, I said it. Um... You said it's WQ, I mean, and I'm saying give, give us a formula. Yeah, it's lambda over mu into bracket mu minus lambda. Lambda over mu into bracket mu minus lambda. So this is a formula that you are being asked. Okay. So guys, what it first means is that you need to know your lambda, and then you also need to know your mu. And once you know the two of them, you can fly. Now let's go back to the question, and then you know the lambda. Don't just take it, know it. Know the lambda and then know the mean. So let's go to the story. Who can tell me the lambda and then can tell me the mu from this? From this question, what is a lambda? What is a mu? What is a lambda? What is a mu? Just be careful of something. Edwina, what is a lambda? What is a mu? Um, Edwina, what is a lambda? Yeah. The lambda, the lambda is um, the fifteen customers per hour arriving per hour. I said both. What is the lambda? What is the mu? Are you are coming to guess? The, the, the lambda. Sorry. You haven't gotten both. Eh? You just wanted to guess one. Let me go to another person. Nana Pukua, what is a lambda and what is a mu? Okay, so please, um, the mu will be 15 customers every hour, and the lambda, which is the arrival rate, will be um, three customers every 15 minutes. 
So an hour will be um, 12 customers. Why did you convert it into an hour? Because the service, the service rate is saying 15 customers per hour. Excellent. It's okay. That's okay. Yeah. And I'm giving you two marks for that. Once the service rate, or once one of them is in hours, the other must be in hour. Or you either convert all of them to minutes or you convert all of them to an hour. But the thing is that the service rate here was giving us 15 customers per hour. So when you're going to find the arrival rate, it must also be in hours, but they're giving it in minutes. Please make sure you put your two minutes down. So if there are three customers in 15 minutes, how many is it going to be in 60 minutes? That's, that's the whole point. So the 60 minutes, okay, we are going to have 12 customers. Because if three customers in 15 minutes, it means that you have six customers in 30 minutes. You have nine customers in 45 minutes. And you have 12 customers in 60 minutes. But how do you do the working? How, how, how do you do? How, what times, what divided by what do you, gives you that 12? The person who showed that, the one I gave them. What times, what divided by what gives you that 12? That's the most important thing. Because um, Nana Beni, you were the one, right? Oh, Nana Puku. Yes, Nana Puku, tell us. What times, what do you by what? Okay, so if um, three customers is 15 minutes, then um, 60 minutes would be more, if more, less divided. So that would be 60 by three divided by 15. So 60 by 20 divided by 15. So that'll be 180 divided by 15. This is how she worked it. So so, so, so this, this is key to finding your lambda in that format. And now that you know that your lambda is 12 hours, that 12 customers per hour, you cannot go and use that 12 customers per hour to now find your queuing model, which was what the gentleman just gave you the formula. for. So in this case, it's going to be lambda. So that's going to be what? 12 over 15, which is bracket 15 minus 12. Okay? And that will give you your queuing time. And that's what the question was asking. So those of you who have worked it, what was the queuing time? What was the queuing time? I'm going to dish out some marks to some bright people. Bright, tell us your queuing time. So the queuing time was 0 0.27 um, minutes. Good, I thought you were going to say hours, then I'll punish hours, you. Hours, hours, sorry. Oh. Hours, uh, 0 0.27 hours. Okay, so what do you do in minutes? In minutes, I didn't say calculate. So that, what do you get it in minutes. That's all I'm asking you. Yes, in minutes, it would no, be. No, listen, I said, I'm not asking you, tell me the answer in minutes. I said, what do you do to get the answer in minutes? That's what I'm asking. Oh, okay. Um, to get the answer in minutes, you'd have to divide it by 60. You have to divide it by. Like 60. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's Sorry, wrong. you have to you have to rather multiply it by 60. If yeah. it's an hour, you multiply it by 60 to get the value. <laughs> I was gonna give you two marks, not give you one mark for that. Thank you, sir. You gotta multiply, and that's what the van has done. Okay. You multiply and you get the answer. So let's 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 show that. Let's show all of that. So that you can all follow. Okay. So you got to learn how to convert things. Okay. All the lambda, we know the lambda was 12 hours. That's what is here. Okay. And so we know that this was asking you about the queuing time. We know this formula. So you just substitute it. Your answer is going to be 0.27, but when you multiply that, okay. But just to give you an clue, whenever you are dealing with, because hours, minutes are sensitive, always use four decimal places. 
And then when you want to convert, you multiply that four decimal places by 60 to get it in minutes. Okay. So it means that on average, a customer spends 16 minutes in the queue. On average, a customer. Now watch, watch the service rate and the arrival rate. Okay. The service rate was what? 15 customers. Okay. The arrival rate was 12 per hour, 15 customers. So 15 customers are arriving um, are being served out of the 12. And on the basis of that, you would have to wait for 16 minutes or 0.27 hours. Okay. And that, that is the picture that has been painted for you. All right, let's go to the next one. The next question says that determine the portion of time the seller is idle. Determine the portion of time the seller is idle. Determine the portion of time the seller is idle. There are some two keywords here that guide you in the process. So solve that for me. Determine the portion of time the seller is idle. Okay, this is asking you about which one? Which one is this asking me about? What is this requesting that you find? Determine the portion of time a seller is idle. What is this asking you? I mean, the, the evidences are all there. And it's still in a handle. Okay, so say he's asking for I. He's asking for I. Very good. And what is the I formula? One minus lambda over mu. Perfect. And what is your lambda? So my lambda is 12. And what is your mu? 15. So he's asking you of one minus 12 over 15, which is what? So 12 over 15 is 0 0.8. One minus so one, one minus that is 0 0.2. Fantastic. Two months for that. Okay. So this is asking simply asking you of the probability that what? Who can tell us? So that a person can take one more. It's asking you the probability that what? Because you got to know those terminology. Margarine, the probability that? The probability that the server is idle. That's it. The probability that the server is idle for one month, okay? Which is also the same as the probability that the customer, what? The probability that the customer- There's no customer in the queue. Uh -huh. Hold on. The, the probability, probability that the server is idle yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's the probability that there's no customer in the queue. No customer in the queue. That the customer can be what? You didn't take a long that one. It's okay. You get one <laughs> The probability that a customer can be what? Let me give it to Hatika. The probability that a customer can be what? Saved. Exactly. Hatika, you get one more. So the probability that a customer can be saved because there is no customer in the queue. So you got to know those terminologies. And when you get that perfectly fine, you will know that this is the I. And this I, this is how you talk. So 20%, okay? The probability that you can be saved at this stage is 20%. It means that you can't be saved much. There's not a big chance that you can be served in this context. Okay, let's go to the third question of that. This were all exam questions, by the way. The management of a Brawaho campus likes to have the operators working 80% of the time. The management, they want the workers work 80% of the time. What is that? That statement alone, what is that? What is that? Like to have it's 80%. Unmute yourself, Marjorie. That's why I muted you from the beginning. Okay. So they like the workers working 80% of the time. What is that? What is that statement? What is that? Who knows that? Uh, let me go to Chachu. Chachu, tell us. This is the utilization. 
It's the utilization. Fantastic. Okay. That's one mark for that. Okay. So that is actually the utilization. He's giving you the formula, the answer for the utilization. Now, the question is what must the service rate be in order for the operators to be as ideal as management would like? What must the service rate be in order for the operators to be as ideal as management would like? Who can walk us through what this question is requiring? Who can walk you us through? Lower your hand if you can. Okay, lower your hand if you can't. Raise your hand if you can walk us through what a question is asking us. Raise your hand if you can walk, walk us through that. All right, Bismarck. What is this question really asking? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the formula for utilization is lambda over mu. Wait, the formula for utilization is lambda over mu. Uh-huh. Yes. We've been given our utilization to be 80%, which is 0 0.8. Given our utilization to be 0.8. Uh-huh. Uh, we know our lambda. We know we our know lambda is 12. OK. Yes. Over what we've been asked to do is to find a new mu. So yeah. we'll make mu the subject. Uh -huh. yeah. So mu mu becomes 12 over 0 0.8. Mu becomes 12 over 0.8. Uh -huh. Which is 15. Which is 15. I'm giving you three marks for that. Thank you, sir. Which is one five. So once you get to know that this was about the utilization factor, now he's asking you to find the service rate. The utilization factor is lambda over the service rate. So if we know already that lambda is 12, and we know because we calculated it here. Where did we calculate that? We calculated it in the beginning. So we should be able to use that to find this. And that gives us this final any question so far? In the question so far. So, so once you know that the key point is understanding that this formula is there. See, if I give you this formula and any portion of the formula is not known, but others are known, you can always use change of subject to find which other one. You can always use change of subject to find any other one. Okay, now let's go to the final and the deepest part of this final and then the deepest part of this. Now, all that we've done so far, sometimes the interesting thing is that management, they want to use several approach to reduce the waiting time. Remember, one of the things we said from the beginning of this is that the most important formula, who can remind us of the most important formula anyway? I want to be sure you all know it. Who can remind us of the most important formula? Of all the eight, which one is the most important that I said? Alberta is ready to give us the answer for one mark. Alberta, which one? Yeah, please, it's the average time Sorry? spent queuing. Say that again. The WQ. Good, that's all I needed. Thank you. The WQ. Once you know the queuing time, to one mark for that, by the way. Average. Once you know the queuing time, okay, and you feel that so many people are spending time. For example, the one we just did, the queuing time was 16 minutes. So a person is waiting now for 16 minutes. That's a long time. You want to cut down that waiting time. So what do you do? There are two things you can do. One, you can add an extra employee. That's the first one. Bring another server. What does that do to the service rate? It increases the service rate. And when the service rate is increasing, waiting time will go down. How do we know? Well, remember the formula. It is lambda over mu into bracket mu minus lambda. So if I am increasing the mu, the service rate, the whole formula will reduce. So that waiting time will go down. So that's the first thing. Okay. Bring an other 
another you know, server, another employee, which will raise the service rate, which will reduce the wait, waiting time. Anytime you have a denominator uh, inside a formula, as long as you are increasing the denominator, the whole formula will be going down. The whole formula will go down, which is a clean time. The other thing is you bring in a new machine. So this, I'm not a human being, but then you bring in a machine. When you bring a machine, the people can go and serve themselves. They don't have to go to that same server. And when that happens, it means that the arrival rates will go down. The arrival rate will diminish. Okay? It will affect the arrival rate. Now, when that happens, the waiting time will go down as well. So when the wait, remember, so when, when the arrival rate reduces, when lambda reduces, or the service rate increases, either of them will reduce the W kill. Either of them will reduce the W kill. Now what will happen? When W kill reduces, waiting time is down. Now what will happen when waiting time is down? Well, then it means that the time saved is created. You create a time saved. So if, if that time saved is measured in monetary terms, so let's say that you have 16, and now you have cut down the waiting time from 16 to four. Ooh, what it means is that now you have saved how many minutes? You have saved how many minutes? You have saved 12 minutes, 12 minutes. Now, what if you are told that each minute you save is equal to $1 million? Each minute you save is equal to $1 million. Now, in monetary terms, you have gained how much? $12 million in monetary gain. But of course, you may have incurred some, some expenditure, isn't it? For example, if it is the machine, the machine will have to be paid for. And if it is even an employee, the employee will have to be paid. So all of these things must be taken into consideration. So eventually, there must be some net gain after you've taken some deductions, the net gain. And that net gain, we check whether it is wet, the employee, or is wet the machine. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a preamble that we want to look at today to complete the entire tabula. Okay, so let's take a typical example. And this typical example I'm taking, I'm taking a typical example, which is also an exam question. So work with me, follow me. If you can do this, I'm doing with me. You have conquered human model. So I hope you go along, get your pen and paper, get a calculator ready. We are doing it together. This is an exam, 2010, 2011 exam question. And I'm going to use that to gradually teach you. Are you ready? Please, if you are ready, type Y. Type yes or Y. If you are ready, type yes or type Y. If you are ready, type yes or why? Type yes or why? I want to be sure that all of you are ready. All of you, you know somebody might be sleepy, okay? but the rest are not. It is the rest I'm interested in. Okay? So if you are ready, showcase. You know, you haven't typed anything today. Today is the time to type something. All right. Okay, let's rock and roll. ShopRite is a busy center. For the residents in East Telegon, the surrounding community, that place is busy. Assume that two customers arrive every 12 minutes. Assume two customers. Two customers arrive every 12 minutes. And out of that, on average, and please note that the arrival rate follows a Poisson distribution. And then the, the service rate follows a negative exponential distribution. That is why it doesn't necessarily mean the same approach. Okay. So two customers arrive every two minutes. Three are saved every 15 minutes. And that currently, there is only one cashier. First question, what is the average waiting time in minutes before service begins? What is average waiting time? Solve the A for me. Let me know right now, right here. 
first of all, there's something you need to do about the, the what do you call it? There's something you need to do about the lambda and then the, the service rate, the arrival rate and the service rate. So first question, what is the question asking you? Let me be sure that the rest of you all know what the question is asking. The first question, what is it asking of you? The first one, it's asking you to do what? To find what? Michael, it's asking you to do what? Find what? WQ, which is the average time. Fantastic, so you are fine. Now, and like I've already been telling you, that is the most important formula. So find WQ. Now you should write a formula for the WQ. And then look so for can the- I get my two marks? No, there's not too much for just saying that WQ. <laughs> That one everybody knows, just that they didn't want to say it. Find me your answer. Or if you have gotten your answer, private chat with me. Private chat me here with the answer. Go and look for my name, Dr. K. And then private chat me your answer. Let me see. I'm going to give some great marks for this. Private chat me your answer. Bismarck has private chatted me your answer. Bismarck, which department are you? Let me go to. Which department are you? Health. Sir. And are you copying this thing from somewhere or you are saying these things from your head? Be honest. No, I'm, saying, I'm solving it right now myself. You're solving all of them sharp, 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 sharp by yourself. Yes, please. You're solving it from home. Yes, sir. They're solving it from home. So nobody, you're not helping anybody to also get some of the marks. Please, as in. You're not helping anybody to get some of the marks. No, sir. All right, okay. So you have three marks for that, okay? This mark, you have three marks for that. You private chatted me your answer, you got three marks. Say first, you also have three Thank marks you. for that. You've also chatted me your answer. Edwina, your answer is not correct. Try it again. Edwina, your answer is not correct. Mark Vandy, you have three marks for that. Van Dyke. Okay. And finally, Bright, you have three marks for that. Bright, you have three marks for that. So those of you who have just sent me answers, you've done extremely well. So guys, let's go through it together. Van Dyke, this mark, and then the rest of you, you have those marks genuinely for that purpose. All right. So the first thing to do is to get your answers in hours. So 12 minutes, three customers are said. Okay. I'll just go down. We'll look at the other part of the question, but I just want us to do that. Okay. So you have to convert the minutes to hours. So two customers are served in 12 minutes. What does that mean? in terms of how many customers are served in an hour. You have to use it in an hour, convert it all to an hour. Then when you get a WQ, you convert the WQ back to minutes. That's what we do. So you got three customers are served, 15 minutes, 12 customers arrived, like two customers arrived, 12 minutes. So how many arrive in 60? And how many are served in 60 minutes? So that's what you do. The Lambda is gonna be 10 customers. How? Well, you are already told that two of them arrive every 12 minutes. So it means that 10 of them are going to arrive every one hour. That's what it means. So Lambda is 10 customers an hour. What about the service rate? The mu is going to be 12 customers. So now you know that Lambda is always in hours. Okay, that's the beautiful thing. So now you now put that into the formula. What is the formula? The formula was given multiple times and it is WQ equals to Lambda over mu to bracket mu minus lambda. Now you know that your lambda here is 10. So you have 10 over 12 into bracket 12 minus 10. If you do that correctly, you are going to get some answers in hours. And then you multiply those answers to minutes. And when you do that in minutes, you're going to get 25 minutes. So whatever answer you get, you multiply by 60, and then you're going to get 25 minutes. So this is it. 
Use the 25 minutes. Now, those of you who got a 25 minutes, you use four decimals, isn't it? Those of you who use the 25 minutes, uh, Michael and Bismarck, you use four decimals, right? Yes, sir. We use four decimals. Good. So that, like I said, use four decimals. Don't look at the one I have here. Use four decimals. Okay. So waiting time is 25 minutes. Guys, question. Is that good or bad? Just give me a quick answer. Good or bad, type, good or bad, type, good or bad. When you go through the questions, you know that it was not good. 25 minutes of waiting time is not good. It's bad. And please, those of you who private chatted me, send it to the page. Let the others know that that is bad. For some of you, your answers are coming private. So that is why we have to go forward and do other things. But before we do other things to solve the problem, let us find the B. The B says find the proportion of time that a customer has to wait. Find the proportion of time that a customer has to wait. I need the answers from five people. Private. The private answers from five people. Two marks each. Give me the answer, the proportion of time a customer has to wait. You should be solving your thing. Please, the, the unit of measurement you give is important. If you give me the unit of measurement, which is not in a proper unit, you'll not get it correct. Okay, so find a proportion of time that a customer got to wait. Levine, the answer is wrong. I say private chat me your answer. Okay. I don't want you to say it for somebody to copy your answer. So private chat me your answer. Okay, so the first person to get it correct is Reginald Insia Ifa two marks. Reginald Insia Ifa two marks. Jijo, your answer is not in the proper unit. Bismarck, Sewabi, two marks. Bismarck, Sewabi, two marks. I need three more. Bismarck, Sewabi, two marks. If I don't mention your name, it simply means you are wrong. Okay. Bright, that is wrong. Abraham is wrong. Asei Chachu is wrong. Nanapukua is wrong. Okay. I need three more people. Uh, Makechiba is no wrong. Levin shooter, that is correct. Two marks, Levin shooter. Nana Benyin a frame, that is correct. Two marks. That's it. Okay. Nana Benyin a frame, two marks. That's it. That's the end. So let's see how to find the proportion of time that a customer has to wait. Okay. So how do you do that? Well, look at the question clearly. Okay. Looks like I didn't even solve that. Let me see. Uh, it looks like. Okay. Anyway, so let's solve, let's solve it together here. Let's solve it together here. Okay. So the proportion of time a customer has to wait. So here's the thing. Uh, it says that, it says that, find the proportion of time that a customer has to wait. What is that? Is that not the, the, the utilization factor? Do you all agree is the utilization factor? Do you all agree? Why for yes? Do you all agree is the utilization factor? Because if you don't know that is a utilization factor, then you have a big wahala now. Okay. So we know that the utilization factor is lambda over the mu. Now we have already calculated the lambda based on this when we're finding the waiting time. We find the lambda here to be 10. And then we find the mu to be 12. So what are you looking for? Okay. Lambda and then mu. So you know your lambda now, okay. you know your mu. 
So all you are going to do is to do 10 divided by 12. And 10 divided by 12 is 83%. That's it. Some of you were giving me 5%. So you see, the key point is understanding that the customer has to wait is the utilization factor. And I'm explaining it further because over 50 of you got it wrong when you sent me your answers. Over 50 of you got it wrong. Okay. So the utilization factor is U equals to lambda over mu. I'm being utilized. So the, the portion, what is the proportion that a customer has to wait? Let me take you back to the question. Okay. The question says, the question says, and it's important to get this thing because it keeps coming all the time. Okay. The question says, find the proportion of time that a customer has to wait. Okay. It's proportion. Once you see the word proportion, proportion is proportion. Okay. And so it is mu equal to um, mu, uh, the utilization factor, which is lambda over mu. And lambda over mu is, oops, lambda over mu is going to be to 10 over 12 because lambda was found to be 10. And this was found to be 12. And when you do that, you're going to get point H three 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 three, which gives you 83%. That, that first proportion, that word you use, proportion even tells you that it's in percentage. And that is for this utilization. So if you do that correctly, that is what you get for this. In the question I'm not. In a question, in a question on that, in a question on that, who's not, who's not clear with that? Who's not clear? Who's not clear? Who's not clear? Who's not clear? All right. So that is how you got to tackle this one. Let me clear the screen. Let me tackle this one. No. Has to wait. Note that point. Has to wait. And by the way, if the customer has to wait, it simply means that the server is busy or the server is being utilized. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me be sure. Let me be sure, let me be sure, let me be sure. So that none of you. Okay, so, so in the first approach, management receives that the waiting time computed in A is not acceptable faced with two options. Management can either employ the assistant or the cashier. Now in employed assistant, four requests will be served every 15 minutes. Now, why is that going to be good? Well, look at before. Before, how many requests? Look at it. There were three customers being served every 15 minutes. That was before. Okay. Three customers were being served every 15. Now, how many customers are being served? Four every 15 minutes. So the first thing you have to do is to recalculate the new waiting time. Do that for me and raise your hand for me. But that will mean that you need to get a new service rate. Remember the previous one, the new service rate for that? You remember the new service rate for that? It was, it was 10. Okay, so now what will it be? Then how is that? Uh, Felix, Felix, tell me. Sorry, it's 16. Oh, wait, tell me what is the service rate now? The service rate will be 16. 16, very good. Yes, please. Fantastic. So now use that one to work. One mark for you. Sir, please, so you get. Don't tell me your answer yet, though. Ah, okay, please, I'm done. So I have my answer. Okay, if you're done, you private chat me your answer. Okay, sir. But you have your one mark for indicating the service rate, the new service rate. Because somebody is not going to calculate it. What the person is going to do is going to copy your answer you gave for the new service rate. And then he will rather, you know. But for you guys, remember the service rate will change before it was three. Three served every 15 minutes. And that is what gave us the clue that the three served every 15 minutes now changes to what? 10. 12. And now it is 16. So you can see that the service rate has gone up, which is good news. How would that affect the waiting time? So 
those I need you guys to tell me your waiting time answers privately. I'm giving you two marks for the waiting time, the new waiting time. Remember the previous waiting time was what? It was 25, the new waiting time. Bismarck, Bright, Ernestina, you all have two marks for the correct answer. Bismarck, Bright, Ernestina, okay. Abraham, yours is wrong. Felix, yours is wrong. Justice Akufu, you are right. Finish. Justice Akufu, you have a correct answer. Finish. So only Justice Akufu there. So the waiting time is going to be 6.25. 6.25. Guys, how did they get it? Okay. So here is the thing. Okay. We know that. You know that the waiting time is going to be the new lambda, okay? And the new waiting time is 16, okay, it's 16. So what are we going to have? We are going to have 16 over 16 into bracket, 16 minus 10. Felix, why is your hand still up? Yes, Felix. So I sent you 6.25, but I said it's wrong. You sent me right now. Not now. In the private chat. I yeah, said it's wrong. I mentioned your name and I said it's wrong. No, I never said it's wrong. Maybe you came later. But you, I gave you correct so long ago. Well, let's stop chasing Max. All right. So it should be 16 over 16 bracket, blah, 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 blah. And when you do all of that correctly, we're gonna get 6.25 minutes, okay? 6.25 minutes. So you can see that based on this, the service rate has what, has come down. Sorry, the queuing time has been reduced. It was 25 before, now the queuing time is 16, okay, 16. So, what do you do? Now, because most of you are using two, four decimal places, you're gonna get 6.25. I wanna be sure that you all got that. The, the, the people that I gave the marks to, did you get exactly that? Did you get exactly 6.25? Um, Emmanuel Sakite, your hand is up. Yes, Doc, um, I thought the lambda was supposed to be 10. Uh -huh. I see there. Ah, okay, sorry, sorry. It's a typo. Let me change it. It's a typo. All right, so it's supposed to be 10. 10 over 16 into bracket 16 minus 10. So when you do that, you get 6.25, 6.25. Anybody who has six should let me know because what it means is that you are using the different decimals. Okay, so now the next thing to do is to calculate time saved. That's how you write it, time saved. That's what you call it, time saved. And your time saved should be previous time. You call it previous WQ. Previous WQ minus current WQ, that's how you write it. Previous WQ minus current WQ. So put your answer in the chat and let me see. Let me see your time saved. Time saved. So your two times should not give you time saved. Time saved. This one I'm not giving max. So put the answer in a general distance. I'm not giving private max for this. This one is minus is class one, class two. I'm not so, so open max. So you should get 18.75 minutes. Okay. So that's what you get. 18. Oh. So it's going to be 25 minus 6.25, which is 18. Point. Look, you gotta be working where we are working. Okay. So now you've got time saved. Let's convert this time saved into money. Let's convert this time saved into money. Now, how do you do that? Well, the question says something. Okay. 
The question says that the shop, let me just take you there. Okay. The question says the shop avoids something. It says that, um, and again, you should always be going back to the question to help. It says that the shop avoids a loss in sales of 80 per month for each minute. Each minute that a waiting time is reduced, you are making 80. You are avoiding that loss in sales. So you are making it, you are saving it. Okay? So the monetary gain here will be what? We have saved 18.75 minutes. So what would be the monetary gain? How do we work the monetary gain? So the next thing to do is to calculate your monetary gain. Okay. So how do we work the monetary gain? So the next thing to write is monetary gain in the first option. Monetary gain is equal to the monetary gain is equal to what? Okay, um, Teresa. Teresa, what did you get? And how did you get it? That's what's important. Um, I had 1,500. Okay, how did you get 1,500? And that was the time saved multiplied by the 86. So 18.75 times 80 CDs. You got what? 1,000 what? 1,005. Okay, so that gives you 1,005. Thank you. Two marks. That's my hand. So, so that gives you the 1,005 monetary gain. Okay, that gives you the 1,005 monetary gain. But, ladies and gentlemen, that was a cost. You remember? that by employing that new person doesn't make things easier. It says that you know, there was a, a cost. Do you remember the salary of the assistant? Do you remember the salary of, yes, Na, what is your question? Okay, sir, um, I'm a bit confused here. So the, the question says that um, the, the in care, okay, they save, what they could have lost that's 80 cities every month per minute um gained right so um i was thinking maybe we're going to do the calculation based on those lines like multiply it by the month or divide it by something like that but not treat it entirely as a whole like that if you understand where i'm coming from i understand so you have to make me understand okay um, can you please go back to the question? The thinking plan. Remember the same thing. I'm taking it to the question. I remember that the savings. Okay. Is, the savings is done within uh, minutes. Okay, so you got a question here. The shop avoids a loss in sales of 80 per month for each minute. That average month customer waiting time is reduced. The per month is nothing. What is important is a minute. Because okay, okay. You didn't tell you a particular month. Some months are 28 days. Some months are 30 days. Yeah. Some months are 31. It's not a month okay. that is important. It's a minute. Okay. Okay, then that's fine then, thank you. So let's now find the cost associated with all this. Okay. So we've seen the monetary gain, but we need to take care of the cost. Watch it, it says the assistant will receive a monthly salary of 160. So what it means is that we need to subtract the salary of the assistant, okay, of what? 160, again, do not think too deep about the monthly, weekly, and those things, okay? Because you don't know what particular month is. Not, it's, it's the content, not the monthly analysis. So we have our monetary gain. So our net gain, that's how you write it. Our net gain 
is going to be the monetary gain minus the amount that you have to pay to the person. What do you get? What value or what answer do you get there? The salary of that. So monetary gain minus monetary loss. Monetary gain is 1,005. Monetary loss is 160. So net gain is going to be 1,000. 1,340, is that it? I want to believe that one, sorry. Hey, somebody is saying 1,350, who is that? It's 1,340. So if you get 1,340. Okay, so that is your net earning, the net gain. So let's make a decision just based on this option. You decide to go for the thing if it gives you a positive monetary gain. Okay. So this option, are we going to choose it? Yes. So the recommendation, and again, if you go back to the question, you will see the question, you know, and what it asked you. I just want to take you back to the question. Okay. It says, um, Let me take it back. I'm just doing this better. One. It says that calculate the financial gain to shop right under option one and advise management of this option. So under option one, the recommendation or the advice to management is to select the option. Why? Because it gives you a positive financial gain. It gives you a positive net result. And because it gives you a positive net result of 1,340, you didn't make a loss after all. So solely on the basis of this, you should go for it. Then we'll go and do the other one. Okay, so that one we'll do it next time. We'll go and do the other one. And then we'll also make a decision as to whether we should choose the second option solely on the basis of its own. That is whether it's positive or negative. Then finally, we'll compare the two. Finally, we'll compare it to. But we'll do that one next time. Okay, I'm going to, we'll do that one next time. We'll do that one tomorrow. And then you can now make real sense of everything.